Welcome back, everybody, to Rune Terror Academy Freshman Class. I, once again, and your play-by-play -play caster, Arlent, joined today by my wonderful co-caster, as always, Gigatron. Gigatron, my friend, how are we doing? I'm doing good, man. It's Friday. The weekend has started. Well, at least for most people, but for me, it started. So <laughs> I am very happy, very excited. It's the last week before playoffs. So really excited to see how this game goes. Yeah, I am too. I am too. The game of the week is Crystal Cave Gaming versus Temporal Image. Both teams coming in here already getting into the pick and ban phases right as we're speaking. So let's hop right over to that. Crystal Cave opting to take away the Nocturne, the Syndra, the Zed, while Temporal Image taking away the Mundo, Galio, and hovering this Anivia ban here. So definitely looking to take away a much beefier team comp, but neither side touching those coveted and vaulted ADCs. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really weird that like, they're, they, they pick Lux and, and not go for an ADC. I don't know, I, I, but I understand because Lux is still a very good flex caster that you can throw in the mid or support role. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really kind of nice for them to go for that for Crystal Cave. But Temporal picks out Oriana and Vi right away. I love this. Yeah, super interesting to grab the Oriana and Vi there. But, you know, haven't really seen Vi too much in a competitive sense across most leagues, but she definitely feels like she's getting up there in power, but just a few more buffs would put her at the spot to really start wreaking havoc. But with an Oriana, that's a very easy ball delivery system into the back line and really just can wreak havoc on the uh, doing damage overall. So not bad, not bad, but we really wonder how well a Caitlyn Lux can kite that out, right? They have so many ways to avoid that, that it makes the Oriana and Vi's life relatively difficult if they don't have something long range of their own. And it will be the Vigar picked up for Crystal Cave. Vigar, definitely a good pickup. I think you have to look at it is a great mid laner that scales really well, especially into an Oriana who builds AP. And of course he scales with AP and bursts a lot of mages because they're most likely building AP. So yeah, this is gonna be really good for Crystal Gaming with that. And you, you pair the Lux up with Caitlyn, that means easy bindings, easy traps going down. So basically you have essentially kind of like having like a Morgana together with a Caitlyn, but but it but it's uh, a I wouldn't say more self-efficient, but a little bit more um, tricky version of that yeah. because, you know, you have to make sure you hit the bindings because sometimes, you know, minions <laughs> get in the way and, uh, you know, they, they like to put a damper yeah. on your party, so. Yeah, yeah, they just like to walk in front of their bindings and die, you know, just for fun because that's what minions do. Uh, and Temporal Image opting to grab the setup in the top side. Very easy counter pick, you have to imagine. Maybe you just toss an Aatrox into him and make his life really difficult. There's something that just outscales him or outranges him or outpushes and shoves and doesn't allow him to do set things. But once those later game team fights come around, he can really do damage if he has enough HP and has the you know full yellow bar going full Super Saiyan. Uh, let loose a massive Haymaker. But Crystal Cave opting to take away two relatively safe and strong AD carries forcing Temporal Image to opt into a Misfortune Caitlyn matchup doesn't seem like the best one in the world. No, I, I mean, I think it's it's not horrible, but it, it, it could be a lot worse. Um, I, I look at that Misfortune can perform very well into a lot of teams, but the problem is, is you have Cage that's gonna uh, stop you pretty easily. You have Locks who can stop you uh, with the Binding as well as Final Spark, and then you also have Nunu, who uh, is the speed demon that he is, and will snowball into you and pop you pretty quickly too. So I think that's something that they're really gonna have to worry about because every time she tries to pull a time, she is gonna be staying in place there and becomes a very easy target to pick off. And you know, maybe I was, as we get the Leona hover and Leona lock, and I was maybe thinking about maybe a Braum misfortune just to kind of protect you know her from that Orin ult, that long range Orin ult, or a long range Caitlyn ult, uh, Lux laser, potentially even Vigar ultimate if he times it right you know those are all key abilities that can protect this misfortune and let her get her bullet time off as long as possible but like you said long range engage is the name of the game coming here from Crystal Cave Gaming they're going to keep you at bay poke you down with as many range abilities they can before they feel like taking a fight 
and they have a lot of early game pressure to do it with you know with the Anunu getting locked in here on the other side temporal image once level six is unlocked they are looking to go and they're looking to go hard in the paint you know pretty much across the board right so two very different styles of team comps and i'm really eager to see how they work out yeah i i think both can work out really good you have set who kind of helps out set up a lot of engage slash disengage by potentially throwing the tank that is trying to get in on that back side of the back line and now you can just throw them into the vigar or the caitlin then and now you put yourself in a better position to set up and try to disable the carries there and i think that's potentially a good option that they're going to play into while you have the follow-up of vi and oriana ball that could go in so that way you're going to have the shockwave go off so i think those are going to be really good combos i think the idea is just try to kind of go balls to the wall unfortunately for temporal image where crystal gaming is going to try and poke from afar but still has very good setup and engageability from them so i look at they have a very good amount of cc but so does temporal yeah crystal cave gaming they definitely seem like they have more of a uh what's the word game plan going into this right they have a very you know binary sort of system where they want to get to objectives first poke you out and then when you seek to force a fight with low hp bars they can engage on you within nunu and orn and really just look to beat you out with the fact that they have those larger HP pools to work with, whereas Temporal, they just want to get to the fight and they want to immediately start the fight because like you said, if they get poked out, if they get zoned away and it makes it hard for them to actually play this game, more than likely they're going to lose most Drake fights unless we get a miracle set Haymaker, or a miracle Leona ultimate, or Misfortune is just allowed to let loose that uh, bullet time across multiple members of the team or even multi-man shockwaves. Like they require so many, they have so many different ways of getting those miracles but at the same time it, their team fight kind of relies on every single time there needs to be a miracle play sort of realistically to work unless they get super super far ahead in this early game true and it, and that's where they could potentially i mean it, it really relies on the fact that misfortune is paired up with liana who can stick onto the caitlin or the lux so you could have a lot of good double up pokes coming out from them as well as just really good trading so in the long run i think it could go very well for temporal but you also have to look at they're probably gonna try and gank bot as lot a lot as much as possible uh because it's probably your easiest one i feel like that you could hit uh set obviously has his regen so you do have to worry about that a little bit when you're trying to trade as well as the vi unless you, they're you know just gonna have you know, a, a scuttle combat going, you know, for the junglers there. Uh, I, I really don't see either really trying to invade too much. Yes, absolutely. And I'm not quite, quite sure about how the priority in the mid lane goes, which way I feel like it's one of those matchups that can kind of go either way, but you have to, of course, kind of lean more towards the Orion in this one. Uh, just the ability to hit over the minions, right? Hit through the minions and really poke on a Vigar, especially if she goes with an Airy, um, or summon Ari, rather, set up. Wait, is it Airy? Summon Ari. I always get those two confused, Aerie. but yeah, the little wisp thing. Uh, <laughs> as long as she goes that, you know, it's scorched, she can really look to poke out Vigar here. Force them off the wave just a little bit, and that's something, that's one of the few places where I think they can really take advantage of it. But of course, that Nunu come in from any angle at any time so I have to be very careful of that exactly and that's where i think we have to really worry about the nudu because nudu, nudu is a really good ganker and i think he can set up a lot of kills so we'll see how it goes as uh you're gonna get into our spectator delay here as we set up for this game one stick around guys as we set up for a banger of a series that'll come out
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Runeterra Academy freshman class. Once again, I am Arlan, joined by Gigatron as we have an exciting matchup. Two differing styles, Crystal Cave Gaming over here on your blue side and Temporal Image over here on your red side. Gigatron, let's break things down for the folks at home. Yeah, just looking at everything here, we have a Comet start for both Lemon as well as King. We're going to see Phase Rush coming out from Brandon. That's good. Oh, a little bit of an invade down here in the bot side, and that's going to be Top Baller getting stunned up immediately, forced to flash. Doesn't pop the heal, so it's a minor uh, little consolation, but at the end of the day, there's still an ADC without flash, so that sucks a lot. Yeah, you know, he ain't being a shot caller right now, but uh, that's perfectly fine. He's going to get flashed out. It's okay. He gets a recall. Has to burn a stun, unfortunately, which is fine, but... You know what? It just means you got to play more passive. And I mean, Caitlyn could do that. She could hit from afar pretty well. She's able to still provide some good amount of damage. And because you are paired up with the Lux, you should be staying a little bit more back. So hopefully between those, they can uh, do some good amount of damage, but not to Rex and uh, Red Panda there. Yeah, they definitely, they definitely still have ways to take control of this lane, but now it's just made more difficult by Rex having flash and Caitlyn not having flash. But one thing I want to bring your attention to real quickly, if I may, Gigatron, is Lemon Sapped not opting for the Predator on Vigar, instead going for a more poke-style build with a Comet, looking to get big Comet procs off of uh, his Qs and Ws there. So not something I've seen in a while. Usually it's like... Usually it's just the Predator uh, coming out from the Vigar in the mid lane, so that's gonna that's gonna be something to watch. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, you know, with the little thing that Vigar is, you would never think Predator would be a thing that he'd be using, but it's a really good keystone for him. But also, Kama's okay. I, I think it's just Dank in the mid lane, and that's already Coyote Stark getting the flash forced out. And you know, we were talking about a little bit just the way Moon. Uh, Nunu can gank so like aggressively early on and that's going to be Rex landing the root in the bot lane even as I'm talking and nothing else comes out of it I think just a little bit usage of the exhaust so already two summoners blown down there in the bot side for the uh, bot lane of Crystal Cave not the greatest in the world no it's not and that's where they really need to kind of protect themselves that little bit more just because of the fact that they are level two. They can all in pretty easy, and blow up one of them. So the fact that King's like even staying up that far, I, I wouldn't even be doing personally. I would be afraid that Rex would just try to come in at me. But Cody is getting traded on heavily here. Yeah, pretty aggressive coming up from Lumen Sap, and you know I'm looking at all these low health bars on you know in the mid lane and in the bot lane and blown summoners down here in the bot side. I'm just thinking prime new new gank territory. I love this kind of chaos going on in the map with aggressive laners, aggressive trading, because it means I have the ability as Nunu, you know, just to start ganking heavily and spam ganks. But since Trust and ADC and Brandon were pathing on relatively the same path, there will be a minor invade coming out from the Vi, just looking to snipe out this Nunu in the jungle, stop those ganks before they even come out. I think it's a really good idea just because of the fact that hey, you're able to kind of spot out where the jungler is and see if you can collapse and get something on them, but... Root lands, and it's another flat. It's another summoner forced out by Rex. This man is single-handedly getting all these summoners out. It's going to be damage going down to Cody Stark, but he's able to get out. A Root lands on a Trust and ADC, but both sides. And down here in the bot side, we missed it. A heal blown from Red Panda, and so many fights across the map with no one dying. No, but I mean, that's fine. You could trading all around from everyone. Oh, look at Even that. Even up here, the side. Oh, man. Everybody wants a solo kill today. And you know what? I respect that energy. Both sides, even though it is a playoff deciding match for Crystal Cave Gaming, they are not playing it safe at all by just beating, you know, an on paper weaker opponent by playing it safe. They're trying to play aggressive. They're trying to really submit home that, you know, we belong in the playoffs. And, you know, I can respect that as a, as a player myself. Yeah, I mean, and I like that they're coming out with aggression. They, I think they really need to, just because of the fact that, you, one, you try to get your Orn leveled up as much as possible. Like, you already see he's up a level on the Paris, and the, the more he can scale, the quicker you're going to get those Orn items out, 
which means then your your team just exponentially just grows even more and more with that so i think the big thing is play through the orn play through the caitlin and the vigar right now and you'll be fine just because of the fact that vigar is definitely getting ahead with his stacks he's sitting at 28 right now which is i'd say it's pretty good um that's very nice that's very nice uh, but while we were talking there, we did see Dragon get taken over by uh, yeah, Temporal that's one, Image. Yeah, that's one thing that Vi actually is super, you know, underrated at is the early Dragon stacking. You know, her um, W passive allowing her to do so much more damage to the Dragon than, you know, most other junglers. This allows her to quickly, you know, if she has control of the bot side especially, get her bot lane to rotate over and they can just, you know, take away that Dragon ASAP, no problem. And... That's just going to, you know, staunch a little bit of the potential value that's being lost just to the nature of Vigar's in the game, right? You know, you're going to get outscaled, so why not stack Drake so you're not as skilled quite as hard? And that's going to be definitely one of the things they should be doing. Um, because that was denying objectives away from Crystal Cave. And you're also looking at then potentially... This team won't be able to regen as easy or get that armor or magic resist needed or getting that extra attack speed in uh, ability haste too. So it'd be real interesting how it plays out. But Fi looking to try to gank up here. For a lane gank doesn't quite find it. Brain needs help also on the top side of the map. That's one thing that folk junglers have to remember that they are on the same path, right? They are looking to gank the same targets. Generally, Nunu has a little bit more leeway in that. But one thing I want to bring attention to is as we get a little bit of a scuffle over the scuttle, Brandon needs help looking for aggressive trade, but I think he just gets out of there with the phase rush. But one thing I want to bring attention to as the directed camp brings us back to the bot lane is the fact that there is a 20 CS or so lead mounting in the bot side. First it was 10, now it's 20, and you have to imagine, does it get up to that 30 mark? Does it get up to the 40 mark? And this is just from superior laning alone um, that they're able to find this sort of advantage as a root lands down on the Reximus and you're just able to walk it out. Yeah, and, and this is where, at this point, they should be kind of coming online more for both Top Baller and King Cross because of the fact that you have more of that range, you're able to get those bindings out. So when she tries a Zenith Blade in, you should hopefully be able to either slow her down or lock her down. And then that way, it kind of forces them to only be able to come in through certain pockets while they are trying to engage. And if they could restrict it as much as possible then they should be able to push the lane out like they're doing right now absolutely and you know i have you just have to point out the fact that this slower pace of style it, it just it just goes with what crystal cave just wants to do pretty much the entire game right like they don't have to worry about taking aggressive trades or if they don't want to they don't have to play this game out in an aggressive manner and it's really on the side of Temporal Image to get stuff going. And I think that's what this Rift Held play uh, that Vi is shaping up to do is going to do as Vi just starts taking out. Brandon needs help, walks right by it, goes for a gank on the top side. Instead, it's going to be the Ornhorn getting blown. A very nice dunk back to avoid it. A huge Haymaker, 288 in terms of true damage, forcing out a flash from the Nunu. And that's a very nice play, all just to secure that Rift Herald. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at their... Ooh, ooh the play real hard on Zephyr. Oh, nice, very nice flash from Paris and Canada right there. Just trying to... If it doesn't accomplish much, just uses this his own flash to get a little bit of damage down into the Orin. And Vi, really poking around, looking for the Nunu, finds him in this jungle, and he's trying to run away. He, I don't think he has the phase rush, and he messes up the snowball as well. And a very nice dunk from the Vi of her own, and it's just going to be her getting first blood in this jungle. Very good stuff from Trust in ADC. Yeah, I mean, Trust in ADC is locking down people very well, especially when you have the Cease and the Cyst going out from her. She's just able to lock people down. She is going for more of that duelist kind of a style, especially with the Valiant Smite. But yeah, this is just really good from them. Just able to try to poke out Brandon whenever needed and make him stay off the map that little bit longer. Oh, Lemon gank in the mid lane he doesn't have the season assist it's already been used in the jungle and it's gonna be limited oh my gosh i don't think any of us expected that damage it was a single tower shot a single q and then a press of a button in and that is an instantly deleted by wow that's all you gotta say well, well so so stack check we are at now 73 on him so 
Oh, that makes a little bit more sense. Burst was going out a lot. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit more sense. That's a very nice root, a very nice ult comes out from Lux, and that is Coyote Stark getting forced out of their own lane. Not looking fun for this Orianna here in the mid lane. Uh oh, King Kraus, Reximus meeting here, and that's going to be a flash coming out from King Kraus already, using the exhaust, forcing Reximus to choose where he wants to go. Gets rooted up, Limisap walking up, looking to point blank Q, point blank ult, and that's going to be Caitlyn ult coming down as well. Misfortune dropping the bullet time, just trying to force him out of the area. Flash from Trust and ADC, but nothing comes of it. A very nice roost, a double root actually, coming from King Kraus, but top baller, wrong place of the map, and he's getting cut off here. Three on one, forces the flash out immediately, and Trust and ADC doesn't have flash to follow up. So. It will be them assuming control of the Drake. Already taking quite a bit of damage is Paris and Canada here. And Orn in the top side of the map do doesn't have the teleport to join. Even what's in that very nice command shockwave to find two. But it doesn't matter because top ball is on the bottom side of the fight. Picks up one. Looking for their third as they picked up Trust and ADC here. And I think, nope, Limisap doesn't quite have the ultimate. I don't think it matters. Just one more auto attack will do it, Brandon. One more snowball to the face. They don't quite get it. And that's going to be Misfortune eking out a minor victory by surviving there. Yeah, I mean, just great job by her. Unfortunately, they were thinking, hey, we got this, trying to give it over maybe to the ADC there with Top Baller or maybe the Lemon Sap, but unfortunately, could not get secured. And this is where the good thing, though, is they're still able to get this Drake for mm -hmm. Crystal Cave. So it's not like a total loss at the same time. You were able to get kills plus get a Drake. Hey, you know what? Now, now you're still getting back into a game that a little bit more you're still ahead right now by about 2k so this is something that even though they've lost out on a rift herald in that case um it is still hasn't been used yet surprisingly oh wow yeah yeah that's 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 actually really surprising not using the rift herald as early as you could right it's it's one of those things that just gets better the earlier you use it you can get as many plays as possible into the right places and potentially take an early turret for free so very surprising that trust in ADC is looking to hold it for as long as they are. And with the duration about to fall off, I think, yep, they're just going to pop it in the mid here. Cody Stark looking for an aggressive trade in the limit sap. He sees it coming and he already has his first item. Ludin's Echo. So this Vigar is going to hurt once uh, he gets full stacks. And full rotation coming out. Four people over here in the mid, mid lane. I think limit sap doesn't realize quite as how much danger he's in. Manages to get the Vigar cage down. So at the end of the day. He's definitely knowing. <laughs> he he figured it out. <laughs> yeah, throws the cage down to try to protect himself, which is good. You have the rest of the team kind of shift around and try to help him out. Um, but again, it's just more of that heads up of being like, hey, yeah, I saw something's wrong here. And then you see four and you're like, oh, yep, yep. You need to run back, make sure I stay okay. And doesn't have to burn any sums. Well, sums are already down anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um, doesn't have to feel like if he had flash, that he had to flash. So, mm -hmm. but. Good job by them. And yeah, Rift Hero being used in some plates, but uh, we're just seeing, you know, our good old top lane wet noodle fight, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, using the plates, they were able to lower the gold deficit they were in by, by a little bit, not too much, nothing right home about. But speaking, you know, a little bit of gold and items, uh, let's talk about Vi's build here. Opting for an Eclipse um up here on the buy as we essentially will see again here on the orange he's trading it super hard onto the set looking for the dunk back looking to use the haymaker doesn't quite have it he's going to drop it now and can he potentially get the orange horn off a very nice season assist to buffer that out and trust and ac picks up his third kill of the game here yeah i mean and, and this is you really gotta do is wait out for that orange horn because if you go a little too soon oh binding went out gonna be a Lux laser a little bit too late to take advantage of it but at the end of the day they are just abusing this misfortune Leona bot side and another root hits and they are just like we oh so much damage it's gonna be the Caitlyn nope doesn't quite find it no good job by Rex to you know pop your shield protect yourself a little bit better but trust it easy oh my god that's just one W if he had to hit the Q Honestly, I think he could have ulted him from that range. Like at this point, this Vigar is so incredibly fed up on stacks. Can we get a can we get a stat check or a stack check? Yeah, we are at now 123 on him. Oh he is God. accelerating so hard right now. It's not even funny. And yeah, I mean this is this is what Vigar does. He's able to farm pretty easily, try to get as much stacks as possible, and now because he has that Ludens Echo, 
he is going to be getting farther and farther ahead. So easy for is the lane Vigar into uh, Orianna. It doesn't have to worry about getting sold out like something uh, a la Syndra or getting shuffled back into a team, something like an Asir, right? Or getting outscaled, potentially something like a Corky. You know, this Vigar matchup is very, very nice. And talking about accelerating the map state, accelerating the game state, first turret getting taken down here at about 14 minutes and some change. And as top baller and King Cross looking to rotate up into the top side, looking to be here for this Rift Herald fight. And it's going to be what a fight is going to be. Trust and AC finally has the Eclipse, forces Brandon needs help to flash. And he's going to secure that, I think. And that's going to get picked up by Xyphus. But oh my gosh, they got instantly deleted. And those are supposed to be bruisers, folks. Yeah, uh, bruisers don't stay alive very long anymore when you have to realize they're building more of still of that AD or, you know, protection with the armor there, uh, Paris as well as Trides. Trides offer some, like, option of, of having magic resist, but you're not getting, like, as much as, like, if you had, like, a Maw or if you had, like, a Banshee's Veil or different things like that. So that's where... Uh, it's small it's getting updated it's gonna be really nice to see how that's gonna be coming out in uh games to come but we do see rift here dig it popped up here they're able to get another turret here and oh nice flash from red panda main right there to survive and you know i thought we were going to be casting another kill but with the a minute or now with the sorry with a second but rather it's spawned now the drake and the bot side you have to imagine that their focus is going to shift from the top side of the map where they just taken a tier one now potentially take a tier one in the mid lane, or maybe just go for the Drake right away. It looks like the call is going to be start that Drake. And do they even contest from the side of Temporal Image? I don't think so. Your Vi's up in the top side of the map. Your Orianna is put pushing top, and Red Panda Man has just back. So no, it's going to be a very free Drake going over to the scaling team comp of Crystal Cave. Yeah, and this is where again, kind of the positioning and trying to time things was not the best. Oh, ooh. Nothing gets spotted out there. So, yeah, it's just them doing a little bit of chip damage and pings are coming down into the mid lane. They want to uh, stop them from doing as much damage to this turret. This is their last tier one and Harrison Khan is running in, looking for the flash, but they, ooh, very nice flash to avoid the Leona ultimate. Exhaust goes down and the emote comes out from King Cross, you know, just a little bit. Oh, they do find the shockwave at the very edge of it with the heal coming out with the bullet time just missing, only hitting on the top baller. So many ultimates invested for zero so very nice stuff coming up from crystal cave to bait out those ultimates how do they take advantage of it and it looks like brandy's help is going to be the answer they go right onto red panda main they know that the flash isn't there the heal is there and it doesn't matter instantly deleted they haven't even used the Vigar ultimate yes a very nice orn ultimate to hit onto two and that's going to be two both of them being the main carries from the side of temporal image means that's a four thousand goal goal lead to the side of crystal cave gaming and when you get hit by that honey ball, you uh, you gotta run, um, and you gotta make sure you get away because of the fact that he's just gonna knock you up, lock you down, and you just get poked out from this team just because that means that Lemon Sap will most likely hit the cage on you, and with that follow up that he has, like right now, oh. what? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the moments where yeah, I'm I'm grateful I have Merc Treads because that. That flash was 100% necessary to survive. Caitlyn ulting just for poke damage and just for a little bit of chip. And that's, you know, with a relatively short cooldown ultimate. That's just something you have the ability to do. But poking way to tier 2 already is the side of Crystal Cave Gaming. Accelerating this game super, super fast. And I don't even think uh, Temporal Image was, was ready for this type of acceleration. Uh, no, I think that's where you, you really kind of have to invest a little bit into trying to protect Oriana just because we already know Lemon's going to have a really easy lane to farm in. And even though that she is farming farther away with her ball, Oriana does not officially clear as quickly as he does. But now that she has an item, she has her... Um, I am sorry, Luna Zeko. And uh, yeah, basically since she has that, she's able to kind of see us that a little bit more efficiently but you have to look at he's been sitting on his for a while he's already got the seekers arm guard stacking up right now he's got all the items needed to build that zanyas that will be coming out soon but ziphus it's gonna get spot out of here yeah spot out of here is ziphus but five people coming to this top side of the map maybe just to look for baron control but how realistically much can you get off of an orn when a very nice double buffer 
gets him out of trouble and yeah, now they showed their full hand top side what do they lose on the opposite side of the map or even potentially in the mid lane that could be a tier two going down yeah it's getting rapidly depleted and that's just the power of caitlin folks she just loves taking turrets pretty much unmatched in that regard and yep that's a turret going over for him so that little play costed them so much even when they invested so little it's it's quite disheartening uh, to see yeah, I mean, and as much as it would have been nice to get something maybe on the Ziffus, Ziffus, the problem is, is he can go in or get out pretty easily, top baller. Uh, he's able to still poke out with King Cross here. And again, they're just able to siege pretty easy because this is kind of what this comp is. They have very good siege, very good poke. So this mm -hmm. is where you have to worry, where if Rex is now around to try to stop them or Coyote, uh, uh, we're going to have a Honey come come in again. Very nice flash from Coyote Stark, but it's like whenever, you know, it's it's like the positions are flipped. In the early game, it was Rex getting out a, a flash or a summoner spell whenever he wanted, right? He just had to go in and they would immediately pop one onto him or flash away from him. So it's it's the positions have been reversed at this point. Brandy needs help or Lemon Sap just need to show up in a lane with a snowball or with a Vigar cage. And then all of a sudden flashes are being blown left and right. Heals are getting used. And, you know, if the fight goes on long enough, teleports are getting called in just for you know not even real threats because again i think that would have been a real threat if lemon sap had the uh um predator but he did not we might see a little bit of a fight in the mid lane here but nope phase rush prox and he just runs away yeah and that's the kind of the beauty of phase rush is you're someone that can run away run in do so much for your team with it and it, it's such a like easy keystone to use that people don't realize oh safe is going in getting a little bit of damage and that's going to be a very nice bullet time across the three members but it does absolutely nothing to a tank or in getting a very nice knock up onto the damage but on the other side of the fight look at that a two-man shock wave onto lemon sap and uh brand needs help but it doesn't do anything they don't go down low enough paris and canada running away so very low here a flash comes in from top baller and he hits it up with the red buff and that's going to be misfortune falling so a three for one and you're trading a tank for two of your carries and a vi that means the mountain drink is theirs yeah i i think the the biggest issue is if paris could have potentially position a little bit better um to throw Ziphus into their team more instead and by team, I mean throwing it into Crystal Cave more instead of throwing it into his carries then it could have been a lot better for them yeah absolutely you know that fight was just uh, a little bit haphazard from the side of temporal image like they are looking for this big wombo combo right and they just didn't find it they found like two separate wombo combos on either side you know minor ones right they use Canada's ultimate into Red Pandas, and then on the other side, they use Trust and ADC's ultimate uh, into Coyote Starks, and they use Reximus's ultimate to start the fight off entirely. Um, and I, I don't remember, but I only think that when he hit onto a unstoppable Xyphus, so it really didn't accomplish too, too much. On the other side, uh, you know, Xyphus and Squad, they played that pretty spectacularly. You know, they were kiting in and out, and they were dodging the necessary crucial abilities that they couldn't continue a wombo combo, and only Xyphus got hit by everything in the in the bookshelf and the truck after it so that's why he's the only one who died in that fight but speaking of deaths 11 to 4 and a 6,000 gold lead with a little bit of change going over to the side of crystal cave gaming um i i, I do a question for you um wh why do you feel lemon sap hasn't tried to go for the dark seal into the magi's right now because like he he's so far ahead why has he just taken the option to just keep getting more and more stacked <laughs> you know that's a really good question i i, I couldn't tell you i think i uh, maybe zanya is more important maybe that death cap is more important but it, even as we discuss that question they're going to be starting up and eviscerating this baron already down to almost half hp and I don't see a contest coming out realistic from Timoral Image. Maybe it comes out now. They're looking for the Blast Cone over the wall. And that's going to be the teleport starting to get channeled from Xyphus. And it's going to be slain immediately. A very nice smite. New new chomp. And he's going to be trying to do what he can. Trust in ADC. But he's going to be left alone. His team didn't trust him. And a very nice command shockwave onto two. King Kraus so low. But manages to get out. And that's going to be an Orn Horde channeled onto Red Panda Man. Or sorry. Main rather. Looking for the damage. Looking for the snipe. And doesn't hit onto anyone valuable. 
So at the end of the day, a few ultimates traded for a kill and a Baron over to the side of Crystal Cave Gaming. Yeah, I mean, this is just, again, try, trying to engage and get in there for Temporal is a good idea. Like, the hope is, hey, you can steal it away. You have the buy, you're able to potentially do that. But the problem is, is she couldn't. And unfortunately, you see that that goes then over to Crystal Cave. But then they're still able to get the kill on her, poke out the team, still survive without losing a Baron on anyone. And yeah, this is just a really good job by Crystal Cave, just knowing their limits and trying to poke out and do as much as they can after the Baron. Yeah, you know, this game one, it really feels, you know, like a statement coming out from Crystal Cave Gaming. You know, they they really are saying, like we, we were stating at the beginning of the game, they, they deserve to be in playoffs and they're going to prove it to us um, with their gameplay. They're going to show us that they're able to still bring things out of the hat and show us a different side to themselves they may have not have shown for the rest of the season or just a continuation of their style that they really like to play. So the siege is on, and this is where Caitlyn and Vigar get to shine. Zyphus down here in the bot lane, of course, split pushing because what do you need the Orin tank for? You're just waiting for him to hit that coveted level 14, level 15 uh, item spike. I think when he can start dropping those. Um, uh, 14. Yep, 14, thank you. So it just now got reached and now Instantly, the upgrade going on to the Vigard, you have to imagine. Yep, there it is. But even as we're talking, Coyote Stark. Oh my god, almost getting one shot. And they're going to... It's a 3-2 split. Taking a tier 2 in the bot side of the map. And oh man, the poke is just disgusting. Yeah, oh my god. That's a, that's a tank, by the way. Well, a bruiser tank. You know, somewhere in between. Oh, yeah, man. It, but you have to look at it. He doesn't have a lot of magic resist. So, yeah, it's not surprising. Oh. <laughs> well, oh, my God. Oh, my. Uh, Vigar, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, Lemon Sap cracks open the game. He gets a double kill. And, you know, Rexman's trying to survive. Coyote Stark trying to survive. The flashes are getting blown. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Brandon needs help. Is on a killing spree. A triple kill for the Vigar. Does he get the Quadra? Do they give it to him? I don't think he does, but it doesn't matter. Paris and Canada taking so much damage, and he has to survive here. The dive. It's going to be an ultimate. That's going to be Caitlyn stealing that Quadra away from the mid laner. And a, like we said, a statement was made this game, and it's going to be Crystal Cave Gaming coming out on top here in game one, potentially up three. Yeah, I mean, this is just a really good performance from them. They're able to again survive a lot of that laning phase where yes they did get a kill on the lux they did get some kills onto uh, brandon and xyphus there but you have to look at that they were still able to control the game very well mitigate a lot of damage done to you you only lost one drake and one rift herald too at the same time so that's something really good by them to realize that hey you know what we managed everything as best as we could. Not only did we also have a Rift Herald onto um, Crystal Cave there, they did get a Baron. So this shows us, hey, you know what? We took down nine turrets. We got three drakes. We were able to still win the objective game and still push through, which again, this is why when you choose this more of a siege poke comp, you're able to officially get through it. Yeah, it was just a really, really dominating game coming out from a uh, crystal cave gaming and they were able to use that siege poke up so effectively and it, it really didn't feel like it had any weaknesses the way that they were able just to play the map play around the early game weaknesses of that composition and uh, i think the new new pick was actually really really savant right it really makes up for the early game weaknesses of that composition and it doesn't allow by to spam gank on repeat because you always have to worry about a new new appearing out of vision snowballing down mid lane or down the river and just shows up in your lane out of nowhere and really really well done uh from brandon needs help and squad but with that we will be taking it just to a quick break and don't go anywhere folks we will be hopping into draft number two of crystal cave gaming versus temporal image
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Rune Terror Academy freshman class, where we are showcasing tonight Crystal Cave Gaming versus Temporal Image. Crystal Cave Gaming up one game over Temporal Image, and I, of course, am Arlent, your play-by-play -play for this evening, joined again by my color caster and Gigatron. Gigatron, we're already into the draft. Ezreal's first picked. What do you make of the bands and the pick so far? Uh, like I said, yeah, after the first game, definitely the Viger band coming out right away, which I think is very good for them. Um, <laughs> Crystal Cave, I think, is memeing right now as they're taking the Misfortune and Leona, probably trying to say, hey, we are people that can perform very well with this comp and maybe do a different change of pace for this game, too, here for them. So, but yeah, as you'll pick up right away, at least it's an ADC this time, and, and that we're not seeing like a flex pick with it which is perfectly fine with me uh but we do see a tom getting picked up and whatever they're going to be hovering now but the vi again okay vi, vi tom kinch ezreal temporal image and crystal cave gaming they're saying you know you guys pulled out this team comp versus us and we can do it better so misfortune leona oriana this is this is a little bit of a flex and maybe one that temporal image doesn't appreciate and you have to imagine how how do you, they counter this right they they've seen it they've played it they're on their own and they, they know how to beat it just if they were to copy tim uh crystal caves um template so what is the template for temporal image it's uh, you know they're still missing a top laner they're still missing that mid laner or maybe it's tom kinch so maybe it's their support that they're missing either way a huge flex coming out from crystal cave and temporal image looking to ban out a pick potentially for the top side of the map yeah, I think the big thing is it's probably Tom Top, honestly. Um, Vi being there just 
negates the fact of uh, Crystal Cave going that same comp that Temporal put out. But doesn't mean you can't facilitate another jungler, whether it is that Nunu or potentially a um, more efficient jungler that kind of does what Vi is. So if they could get something like that, you know, into their comp, maybe they can play very well into this Tom Kench, into this Vi. And still be able to deal with the Ezreal. Ezreal's just gonna try to poke from afar. Same thing with MF. MF is just gonna try and again use those bouncing bullets with that double up. And I would love to see who they use as a support because again, I, I I'm really assuming this town is top. I don't see it going anywhere else. Yeah, Hecro makes sense that you pick it up with the Oriana there. It's gonna be the perfect ball delivery system. And maybe it is Tom Kinch uh, in the top side. That would make more sense than a Tom Kench Ezreal lane, especially when Karma is still open, right? You can look for that Karma Ezreal lane that's so coveted, so safe, yet so dangerous to play into. Ari Vi, that's an that's an oldie but goodie. You know, Vi looks for the fights in the jungles. Ari can really show up quickly to help her out. And yeah, like I said, oldie but goodie. And it's going to be the matchup of, you know, the El Clasico versus the El Clasico 2.0, Oriana Hecarim, Vi, Ari, which mid lane, which mid jungle duo comes out on top. And it, Will be a Tom Kench support, so Volibear is going in top side, and it's going to be counterpick going over to Crystal Cave Gaming. What do you pick here? Set Aatrox, Camille, Fiora, or you can go for the Orn again. It's really up to them. They have their pick of the litter. Yeah, it's really a good amount of choices. That's why, like, I hate bears sometimes being in top because you still have a lot of good counters that can really also negate the rest of the team. Like, you can just play to Fiora. And the Fiora just does so well in the snowballing and between slip pushing, killing people, and just the high efficiency of just being one of the great top players that she is. It's one of the things I hate going against as a, when I'm playing bear, but they're going to pick up the Orn. Still a very good option to their team. It has a lot of good CC again coming out of the Crystal Cave. They're able to set up, I would say, Pretty well for a bolt time if uh, you land the Solar Flare or Shockwave or Onslaught Shadows as well as the uh, Ornhorn coming out. So I think a lot of that is really good from them. But like you said, Ari, Vi, good combo. Can set up very well with a Tom Kench being a diver going in with that Missile Voyage and hope that maybe they could potentially do a Tower Dive because you do have the Volley Bear. Yeah, absolutely. and. Speaking of the Volley Bear, speaking of the Orin real quick, this is a surprisingly flippable matchup. You know, you look at the stats and it says, uh, I forget which way exactly, like a 51 uh, to either Orin or Volley Bear in terms of percentage win rate. And it's such a flippable matchup, right? It's, it's so incredibly close. Both of them have ways to beat the other. And it's really just pure skill. Whichever top laner is just better at their champion and better at understanding the Volley Bear or better at sending their opposite in the Orn, that's really going to decide this top lane matchup and you can say it kind of doesn't matter because uh, to an extent i do agree with you but i I've, I've been on the i've been on a coach with the team you know i've I, as a team i've been coaching and uh, we picked the volley into the Orn matchup and at 10 minutes when the oh five and zero Orn was running down our ad carry it wasn't it wasn't a pretty sight at all <laughs> no and, and, and i mean that's where it's really trying to find what's the best option again to still go into bear but also what's the option that temporal needs to take with potentially whatever is going to be that blind top laner you're going into and when you already know hey they play orn they play a lot of good utility champions like me personally i would have left the window up i would have probably taken out the orn um window again really good champion but i feel like can get negated early it still suffer throughout the game as well. So I think that's an option that in the future people could potentially change up and, you know, not have to ban out the time there. I think the shine was still a good idea just because of the fact that Stan United, uh, it's really good, especially with the fact that you have the Akron that was picked up. Like not only are you a good ball delivery system, you're a hustle got a shed that can come in on you, that can taunt. Yeah. Shockwave goes out. <laughs> oh man, it's like a wet dream happening for CC there. But um, again, just I think they they really need to kind of have a level head going into this. You're already down 
one to zero here to Crystal Cape Gaming and for them to try to win out this last game here, I think they really just need to uh, play to their strengths. You know what? You're, you're picking the Ezreal. Ezreal's going to be good early to about level uh, item level two when they get like that tier going out. So he's ramping up, get that man immunity, do a lot of damage with it. And I think that's where once it exceeds that, he could fall off that little bit more unless he is getting a head and a head and a head. Uh, whereas the R you should hopefully be able to pick up the slack throughout the game there. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I do agree with you. Temporal image finding a little bit of an uphill battle, but um, you know, I think they can win with the same comp. It really just relies on the R by playing to their strengths, like you were saying, and really just looking for those early game, um, play plays happening uh, yeah. but at the other side of it crystal cape gaming you know they were looking so dominant in that early lane phase i think if they play it pretty much exactly like how they played it and then explode it forward like the way that they did you know we might be looking at a really really rough game coming out another rough game coming out for temporal image so what i want to see from them is like i said actively using their mid jungle 2v2 to affect the rest of the map looking for actively looking for level six tower dives level eight tower dives with a volley bear whenever his ultimate's up and then you know bot lane probably just stay safe in a turret by the time can roams just doing anything to try and find an advantage and trying to force the game state forward elsewhere yeah because i think you have to realize like king cross is probably gonna run after there a while so obviously rex has to go to and if you're going to take two safe champions, which you would say that this fortune isn't too bad, you're able to kind of use the strut to get away and make sure you keep that movement speed going for yourself, as well as Ezreal does have the phase shift where he can, you know, jump back, jump forward, do whatever he needs to without having to burn a flash yet. So I think that is still a very good safety net for both sides with that. But yeah, I, I expect both supports trying to roam trying to get their teams going ahead as much as possible and yeah it, it's really just going to be dependent on how well uh temporal plays this absolutely it really you know backs against the wall for temporal this could be well I, I think this is their last game of the season if they lose here but you know potentially they can play spoil at a crystal cave gaming if they're able to bring claw back a 2-0 victory here but have to see at the end of the day don't go anywhere folks this is with the freshman class of rune terror academy game two
Welcome back, folks, to Runeterra Academy, the freshman class, potentially the last game of the season for Temporal Image as they go up against a 1-0 deficit versus Crystal Cave Gaming. I am your play-by-play uh, -play for this evening, Harlan, joined by Gigatron over here on Colorcast, and we see a, maybe a potential invade coming out, Giga. I don't think it's potential. I think they're definitely evading it this way. They are definitely <laughs> right in the thick of it. So they get two wards out right now. Top baller has moved up out of his position. Same thing with King Cross. They're going to go back to their five point right now. And I don't realize, like, you know what? Yeah, they're, they're going to see me when I go up to this top side, and that's fine. But they do have that ward trade off on the red side buff. So, ooh, ooh. Cross is going to spot it out. Little see it that little experience lead could be very crucial when it comes to deciding these bot lane plays as going forward. So, very nice sweeper start coming out from trust in AD carry there. And Brand needs help, you know, with his top side so heavily warded, he's just going to start on the bot side, clear up, and hopefully by the time he gets there, they're going to be gone. But one thing that you know, this Hecarim has over the Vi in droves is the clear speed, right? He's just going to be ripping through the jungle while this Vi. You know, can potentially struggle in terms of actually clearing camps. So, gonna see how that goes through. As you already see a trade in top side, and you get to see the a little bit of the strength of a bully bear into a tank matchup. Yeah, I mean, volley bear still good. I I just feel uh, it, it's unfortunate that he could still be kind of lackluster early on at points, just because you have to look at like he's trying to trade as much as possible like right now. King Kraus landing the root. A little bit aggressive coming up from a, you know, level one Leona dropping that root there, but doesn't care at the end of the day. Has the aftershock, took very little damage in the trade, and bot side looking to get level two first. Which one's gonna secure it and which one's gonna make the play? Mm, I mean, they did get level two first on the Rex and Panda, so uh, it is negating King Kraus hitting that level two, which I think is good. Uh, but they are going to hit level two after this uh, wave here. So I look at that. This is where what's really good is they are invading. They're able to get that extra ward out. Yeah. And maybe you can set up for something when the Hecarim does try to come out. Yeah, interesting setup from Tristan ADC here on the top side of the map. And skipping the Raptors cap means that they can start this invade onto the Krugs of Brandon here. And... That's really nice pathing coming up from the Vi, and that's definitely not something that Hecarim should be expecting. You know, uh, there are very few junglers that would expect that. And at the end of the day, you know, it might be, it might result in a, a kill though, because Brandon needs help. Just looking to gank in the mid lane. A very nice flash from Coyote start to get themselves out of there. They did miss the charm. Phase rush pops for Lemon Sap, and I think that's a one trade actually for Cody Stark, even with the flash missing. Yeah, I, I think it's still good because this means that Coyote can get ganked again. 
But Brandon. Uh oh, Brandon's help doesn't have flash, but has a ch devastating charge to get himself out of there. And he will be able to pick up the uh, Scuttle Crab and kind of equalize, you know, a little bit of uh, the cap lead that uh, once Trust and ADC goes back and farms up those three caps of his own, he will be missing, right? So, Brand needs needs help. It's going to be the first one to back uh, in this jungle matchup, and that's a tempo that can definitely use on the map. Oh, ooh. A dive? There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, it says Trust and ADC getting on to the far side of the map and just waiting to bait them in just a little bit. Definitely waiting, hoping that they will take the bait, maybe go in on to Reximus here, but I don't think that's going to be the case. He does do the charge up, but it's like, you know what? I'm just going to go clear my camps, and that's it. That's all he really needs to do. So uh, even though he is up, or was up, the extra camp, now they're going to be right about even once both are done with the Gromp as well as the Krugser. So a little bit of that tempo that he, and the you know value gained wasted because even though he will they will be equal at the end of Aven camps it's it's brandon like i said is the one who got the reset off first so he will have that little bit of advantage over the vi in the long term especially when it comes to counter ganking and those plays being made it, you have to imagine the Hecarim's just going to be able to do more right he just has an item over a vi who just has red smite and two pots available so Lemon Sap Coyote Stark, both of them looking to back here in the mid lane, both of them looking to stop the other's backs and really make it difficult. Lemon Sap has already backed, however, and it's already teleported back, so he's the one who can make Coyote Stark just stay in this lane and waste time, just waste resources trying to back on the best way possible. Yeah, I, I mean, this is what you want. You want to make sure resources are not being used properly you want to make sure you can keep that little bit of experience lead you want that gold lead which they do slightly have right now for crystals so good job by them but rex rex getting awfully aggressive down here when he's just thumpkin but at the end of the day it doesn't matter and one thing i just want to highlight is how well they are tracking this hecarim here they ping directly onto both of the camps he had up they ping directly and they let the team know that Hey, he's going to be on the Raptors. Hey, he's going to be going towards uh, the Krugs like right now. So, you know, they have this man's pathing down pat and using that superior jungle tracking allows them again to secure, you know, the first rate coming out from Temporal Image. So honestly, really, really nice landing, really, really like nice um, rotations coming out from the side of Temporal Image. And, you know, I, I really like what I see, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to those mid-game plays. And again, Coyote start getting ganked up here in the mid lane. And a very nice command shockwave to pull back the ulting Ari. And I think it might be enough. Lemon Sap looking for the last little kill. And the ball was just too far away to find a significant advantage. It's going to be a flash over the Hecarim. First blood over the trusted ADC once again. And maybe it's a different story this time. But no. Brandon needs help. Ghosting away. Just running. Just sprinting. So very far away. And he manages to just eek by the bear, eek by the frog. And uh oh. Red Panda man. I'm looking very scared alone. And that's gonna be the dive coming out from Paris and Canada. That's gonna be the Orn looking for the ultimate. Hits it onto all three members. Huge damage onto Reximus there. A knockup goes down onto the frog or catfish as well. And I really need to remember what he is. Either it's an amphibian or a reptile or something like that. But King Kraus using the flash. Hesitating a little bit and Red Panda Man or Main again flashing out and it's just going to be a little bit of a smite fight up here in the top side of the map. They're going to be skirmishing just a little bit. Nobody wants to help. And again, it's just going to be those guys fighting. So I think everything has calmed down. Everything goes back to lane state zero. And at the end of the day, even with that single kill used, full time goes down first for a little bit of chip damage. And like I said, even with that little bit, you know, that kill picked up, it's still equal gold. Like the, the gold's still very even. You're up one kill to zero. You have the Drake on your side now for a temporal. So, really, it, it's just the good job that kind of stay ahead, but then also the good job from Crystal Cave to still keep up with them. Yeah, absolutely. It's just interesting. Um, you know, they got the first Drake, they got the first Blood, and still, it's about a hundred gold difference between the two teams. King Krause. Being forced back a little bit there. Red Panda main using the ultimate just to poke down top baller here. Starts hitting them with auto attacks, but 
And as a real machine, his auto attacks aren't doing the, you know, the most damage in the world. Excuse me. Um, no caught me a yawn. Not because I'm bored of the game. I've been. <laughs> um, um, I mean, Sam. Yeah, he's not speaking. Howdy Stark gets the solo kill in the mid lane. The ignite, the flash, the ultimate, the spirit rush, all of it going down to Lemon Sap. And, you know, even as Lemon Sap died there, still managed to get the ultimate off that caught Coyote Stark on the flash and pulled him under tower a little bit, forcing out the, uh, you know, the RH who used the spirit rush. So, at the end of the day, not too bad, all things considered, but still. Just now, the gold getting over a thousand in terms of a difference, and Zyph is trading super hard in Paris and Canada, but nothing comes of it. Look at this! Like he's just able to melt him through with the brittle. The brittle just does so much damage to him. There, you have a lot of good utility coming out for Zyph. The only problem is he's low on mana right now, so if he does have to get into a battle fight with himself or with the other team, there, yes, he needs to be a little careful, but. Uh, looks like Vi is opting to take the first Rift Herald as well, and she will get that with no issue. Vi, once again, looking to flex her muscle, and then, you know, it's a different build, a different story this time. Instead of going for the Eclipse build, they're looking for a Triforce, looking for a Divine Sunder sort of build. So, interesting adaptation coming up from Trusted ADC here, and I... I can't say I'm dissatisfied by it. I really do like it here. And again, Coyote Stark getting ganked here in the mid lane. Doesn't have the Spirit Rush, doesn't have the Flash. I think this is just going to be a kill. The ultimate comes out and it's picked up by Lemon Sap off of the command attack. A very nice job from them to shut down this potentially snowballing Ari. And once again, close just a little bit of that gold lead. Yeah, it's really good by them just because of the fact that they're able to try to get back try to do what they can and even though laning is as have been probably great you know oriana is still up on cs i think cross is going to trade it on right now the only difference that you really see here is pretty much both carries coming out from crystal gaming have higher cs compared to their counterparts mm, yeah that's true very nice uh pick up there yeah 81 cs in the mid lane to 66 and 85 to 76 it's going to be a gank going down to Rexmas here, and Brandon needs help. Doesn't have the ultimate, does have the ghost, however, and that's going to be the bullet time getting dropped down. The heal comes out from Red Panda main, and King Cross finally throws out the root, throws out the stun, throws out the ignite, throws down the ultimate. Then so much damage going down to Hecram, actually, as the Tom Kench falls in Red Panda main. He's just been doing so much damage. That's going to be Cody Stark picking up a kill. Maybe looking for a third. Oh, the charm just goes wide, and... The Electrocute picks that one up and King Krauss falls as well. That's a triple kill for the Zarya. And no matter how many times you gank her, she's just going to snowball exactly like this. Yeah, and, and, and that's where, that's what people need to realize. is like, hey, she can come in with Vi at any point. Again, we talked about two really good duos for both mid and jungle here. How well are they going to perform? And looks like Trust and Coyote performing this that slight better right now as they're able to secure the second trick right now like we said the el classico the original coming out in full force here just to show these new school kids what is up yeah and that you know the gold lead reaching about 2000 almost hitting that 3000 mark there so yeah like you said the cloud ooh, another mountain soul so Potentially, we could see a four stacked mountain, which would be pretty huge for an orange, right? Or we just see two picked up for the side of temporal image. Regardless, they're doing much better in this game than they were doing in the other one. Already surpassed the kill threshold of that game by about one. So nothing to write home about, but at the end of the day, nothing to complain about. Reximus potentially caught on the wrong side of the map, but they don't want to take the fight. Realize that Cody Stark's in the area, still can hit charm, and it's going to back off. Already, Divine Sunder picked up for the Ezreal, so not a huge damaging Ezreal build like we have seen recently but not the worst as real build in the world uh just looking to pump out just a little extra damage against tanks yeah and i think that's fine i mean as they look at that you have uh king cross is gonna be tanky you're gonna see brandon's gonna get tanky and xyphus is gonna get tanky so i think those are all great options to work with for red panda there um so this is definitely a good item that he is choosing to go for with 
the wet noodle fight's still continuing up here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely not falling asleep watching Volibear and Orange trade for the <laughs> thousand time. You know, in the early game it was interesting because they both did, you know, more damage to each other, relatively speaking. But now it's just kind of a, you know, a little bit boring. Bot side a little bit more interesting, but again, you're just hitting Leona, you're hitting a not uh, Tom Kinch, so realistically not a whole lot of damage coming down. We're just really we're just really looking for these junglers to make the plays happen and right now they don't have to make a play happen even though hard like again hard trading in the top side of the map paris and candace looking to get some attacks down and cyphus looking to survive for any help just running away and you know they're honestly looking for to make the t play for the turret uh here in the bot side of the map yeah and i think they could definitely get that uh we do see trust and kind of they're kind of shadowing each other right now but I look at that. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that they couldn't potentially in the spot side, but it's going to take a lot more than the two there. Cyphus and Paris and Canada are both just beating each other up. Cyphus looking to get an ultimate. Both ultimates getting popped out by both top laners here, and I think Cyphus could have killed if he had just gotten that last auto off on Paris and Canada, but with the charge through him, didn't quite get the auto attack, and Paris and Canada is able to survive to another day. Cyphus as well, and during all that happening, First turret is picked up by Red Panda Main and Rexmas, so completely different shift from games one and two. And maybe that potentially affects how these fights plays out. Yeah, I, it definitely could. I mean, it's something that uh, if he, he could could have landed the horn, uh, uh, call the forge got a little bit better. I mean, it, it could have been okay. I mean, you still have to look at, he's still in lane, wow, Paris is not, so again, just that kind of versatility that Xyphus has by playing the Orin. It's like, hey, you know what? I can still buy items. I don't have to go back. I'm still going to exponentially scale there and everything Vi is coming up here. Xyphus still has season and test available. Forces out the flash from the Orin tank and uh, decides not to follow up. I think that's a good call, especially when, you know, you don't have the Divine Sunder, which is the item the Vi is going for here, so... Very smart at the end of the day, just to not risk not risk a kill in return. Exactly. Why risk death when uh, you can just still get this turret here, uh, potentially, but it's Rift Hail being taken here, potentially. Yep, they're not going to get away. Um, by Temporal, and man, oh, look at that train on the top baller there. Top baller really feeling the pressure right about now, and so it's going to be a poor man death ball into the mid lane looking to pick up this turn. I think you just kind of, this is one of those situations where you just seed it. You just don't try to contest it. You don't step up and you don't lose any HP here. But Kraken Slayer picked up by Misfortune. So it's not going to be a poke Misfortune, a lethality Misfortune build. It's going to be the attack speed Misfortune that we all know and love and hate <laughs> in equal measures. Turret, like we said, get picked up with the Rift Hill. I don't think anything else comes of it, but... 11, sec 11 seconds on this Drake, and this could be the deciding Drake. They really need to look for a fight. They really look, need to look to contest this Drake here, or else, you know, by the time the fourth one comes around, it could be too little too late. Teleport coming in here, Charm, and lands it. Brandon gets instantly popped. Do they go into King Krause here? Yes, they do. Forces out the flash. The ultimate comes out as well, and yeah, I think it's too little too late. <laughs> yeah, definitely there. I mean, you're just getting so much now onto um, Temporal that they just are doing so well. They got three drakes now to their name. You know, good old Earth, Wind, and Fire there as it's stacked up the right way. So, um, just great job by them to just keep this dragon control. They both were able to get the rifts. They're able to still get some turrets down, potentially going to try and get this top side one locked down as it is very cracked down right now. But um, again, just keeping this lead going. They're up about 4K right now still. And yeah, this is just kind of going into Temporal's favor. This is really their game to lose at this point. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I want to highlight, you know, it is their game to lose, but at the same time, you have to look at what they're into, and you have to look at this, uh, how close the CS is in a lot of these lanes. You know, right now, a 10 CS lead for a top baller. He's also been getting solo XP over um, Red Panda Main. Not that the you know, current CS bar 
you know, reflects that, but also mid lane, a very comfortable 50 CS lead. Not quite enough to make up for, you know, the four or five kills, but definitely enough to keep it close that you have to be very careful of this game goes too long coyote stark dropping the ultimate dropping the charm a little bit slow on that drops the flash as well king kraus is able to kite away and this could be the turn they're looking for they have though oh a three man shockwave and that's lemon sap and this could be the turn that they were turning for like i stated now what are they looking to do lemon sap with a flash in and reximus just looking to get a stop laner out and they finally take a turret down there in the bottom side of the map, but it doesn't matter. Lemon Sap finding another one. Cease and test comes out of the Xyphus in the bottom side of the map. But look at that Ignite going down onto the Void Bear. Xyphus just trying to walk away with his life, trying to run into Brandy's help, and they're going to seek to turn it on a Trust and ADC. And I think that is a very oh. dead buy, a very nice juke. And does she get away here? She doesn't quite. She has a Divine Center healing. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. And folks, this could be a thrown game by Tim Pearl. Uh, but, or potentially a recovered game by Crystal Cave Gaming, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, it could go either way if you're really thinking about it, because uh, as much as Trust did have kind of that more flashier style, of like, oh, I'm going to go this way, and then flashes back, so that way he gets around, unfortunately, did fall there. And that's something that they really need to worry about, because if there was an objective to worry about, other than Baron being up right now, um, it definitely would not be going into Temporal's favor. But... I have to look at that. They're a little weak to do Baron here coming out from Crystal Cave Gaming. But again, just great job by them. Able to get that good shockwave up top. Still able to secure two. And yeah, this is just, it, it's really going well for them. Yeah, really interesting play coming out from Coyote Stark there. Flashed, ulted, and so delayed on the charm. Didn't, you know, waited until Top Baller had flashed away himself before throwing out the charm. And. I could have been done a little bit better, a little bit the mechanics coming out, of course, but really, really rough to start off that play with that kind of misplay, right? So looking to be just that little bit better going forward. But like we said, because their CS advantage overall is so close, you know, they they got the ob objective bounty and, and immediately fell off. It immediately went over to their side. They got so many, so much gold back onto the necessary members that, you know, you know they still have a real shot in this game and they're saying don't don't count us out just yet still haven't quite found that wombo combo they're looking for but that wombo combo gets easier to execute as this game goes on and more teams look to group and especially looking to group in a minute and 20 seconds roughly lemon sap just poking down onto the buy there just being annoying using the ball yeah i mean that's just oh look at that especially on the red panda it's just ball distance really good job by lemon sap there and it's going to be Crystal Cave Gaming looking to control this bop side of the map, looking to drop some vision down and so much damage. But it's going to be Coyote Stark looking to make another play with the Spear Rush. Doesn't quite find the charm. And that's the Wombo combo, folks. It's going to be the bullet time just to come out, just to delay a little bit of the members. Reximus goes in solo. And it's going to be a very nice E. But Ezreal trying to flash. Ezreal trying to arcane shift away. Ezreal trying to heal. I don't think you escape from the horse, pal. He's going to hit him down with the Rampage. And that's going to be three quick kills going over to the side. Crystal Cave Gaming, they're going to be looking to knock down this tier one and then look to collect this Drake. 30 seconds remaining on that little objective. And, ah, uh, yeah, folks, I think I think this could be a rough game from uh, the side of Temporal Image. Yeah, I, I think they kind of just need to slow down, get some things going for themselves. Ooh. Yeah, I think Paris and Canada just runs it out. I don't think uh, the Orin can follow up, doesn't have the ultimate, mind you, so really hard for him to do anything to really catch a runaway bear and you know right now it's just on trust and AC to make the hero play to make look for the steal and does he go for it does he look for the opportunity they don't have shockwave to keep him out of the Ooh, it's gone instantly doesn't even give him a chance it forces him to clear the wards forces him to check that ball because like i said they didn't know that he didn't have shockwave for just a few seconds so really really rough so finally the comeback story starting to come out from the side of crystal cave gaming how how do they go about securing even more more belief for themselves i think the big thing is is now you finally got a drink for yourself you keep yourself still worrying about that soul point uh baron is being started right now by temporal i think you know what maybe try to get this um be able to maybe siege this stop them from getting it and if they can um this will put themselves a little bit back in the favor but 
looks like it's just still gonna be no contest. Oh, maybe too late. Oh yeah, way too late. And and one thing I just want to highlight why it came out so late is you have to look at where the vision was. You know, their mm -hmm. vision for the side of a temporal image, it was all devoted to this top side of the map. It's so clear it's clear as day for them. They saw them walking in, they saw them walking out and they just had complete control of the top side in terms of vision. And then the, for Crystal Cave Gaming, their vision was still devoted to the Drake. Their division was still devoted to that bot side of the map. And it reflected that. They didn't even bother pinging onto the Baron because, you know, they were like, maybe it's just not a real opportunity. Um, but it was. And that is a very nice sneak coming through for the side of Temporal Image. Paris and Canada potentially walk into the wrong area of the map. Forces the ult over the wall. Doesn't quite get over the wall, but his friends are there. That's going to be a charm landing onto Leona. But look at that! Another Shockwave onto three members, and that's going to be R instantly deleted using the ultimate as well. And that's going to be Top Baller finding a kill. Not, nope. Yeah, Top Baller finding a kill onto Red Panda main, and Wrexham is getting taken out by Lemon Sap. Paris and Canada trying to do what he can, clear that vision off of the failed play from his team, but buddy, that's three Barons taken off the map instantaneously. Yeah, this is where they are playing very well for Crystal Cave. They're able to, again, take a lot of these trades, even though, yes, you're still giving up King Cross there. It's your support where you're able to get three from it. Again, just great job by them to just realize when to go for stuff. Oh, Jason just has comes out on the top baller. He's trying to kind of wait. He's trying to drop the heal. No, it does, he does have the heal. does have the flash. Doesn't want to use it. It's trusting ADC, the force to use the flash. Brand needs help and Lemon Sap there to protect their ADC. So even when he's alone, he's not that alone. Brand needs help, potentially in the wrong side of the map. Doesn't have the ultimate to get out. Doesn't have the ghost, but doesn't need it at the end of the day. Xyphus looking to knock down that turret. Doesn't even bother throwing out the charm from Coyote Stark. Yeah, I mean, he realizes he's like, you know, at the no point, you know, Orange one that could just use his breath, be unstoppable, and yeah, it's just, even though, yes, he could have done it, maybe would have gotten a little bit of extra damage out, is it really worth it when you have an Orange who sustains still very well and has um, just everything that they need going for himself? So that, you know, that Baron buff that they took has completely been neutralized, completely been equalized again in terms of gold. So the gold lead back down to around 700, you know, 800. It's it's a close game still. and and But right now, I think I have to give the scaling over to the side of the El Clasico 2.0, right? You, to the o Oriana, to the Hecarim, to the Misfortune, to the Lona, to the Orn. It's just such an easy wombo combo style of team comp and Reximus hasn't been on point with those Tom Kin sheets so this Ezreal even with his flash even with his arcane shift can still die if your Tom Kin isn't on point with the eats but it is going to be Xyphus potentially the one getting jumped on Paris and Canada dropping the spirit rush dropping the flash coming up from Crowdy Stark they're going to be dropping the ultimate they're dropping the ignite and it's just going to be Xyphus trying to walk through it as best he can doesn't have the flash doesn't have a way to get through it but he does survive at the end of the day. The charm goes wide, doesn't quite hit. Doesn't matter that the Ezreal ult hits, he doesn't die from it. And they lose a turret in the top side of the map for this play. They might even potentially lose a turret in the mid lane. And I don't think it was worth the teleport comes out from Paris and Cannon to keep that alive. Uh, and even that, it's kind of like, is it really worth it? Oh. Oh, top baller this time, potentially getting caught out. That's a three man fear into a three man bullet time. What a beautiful turn, and they're going to get the Ornhorn on it, too. That's going to be Reximus getting taken out first. Paris, and kind of instantly deleted. And a double kill from top bar. Way to turn that play so very well, and they're going to be looking to potentially even end the game. I don't even think they need to go for the Drake here, spawning in about 10 seconds. No, I don't think they need to. I don't know if you can quite necessarily end. You do have to worry about Red Panda and Coyote Stark there, but they definitely can get the inhibitor. Maybe just go run back. Be safe, get the Drake, and then um, go try to get some more objectives of like trying to get this bot side turret that's very weak. Oh, absolutely. Very good call. Yeah. And it's two items on the misfortune, has enough to buy a third um, back, and you know, versus the two item as here, but really where the power lies is in this, uh, you know, itemization of the Oriana. Three items over her opponent has the void staff so she's cutting through the volley bears mr like butter she has the seraph's embrace or the archangel staff at this point actually to really do a lot of damage and yeah both teams adcs and both teams uh mid laners both 
looking to carry them, but at the end of the day, it is just the Eye of Luden and Wormfall and Sacrifice coming through two ornaments that are so very powerful. You're definitely very powerful. I mean, you have to look at now. Uh, finally, we see Lockett also being, you know, shown for King Cross there. He was sitting on his uh, one item there for a while, and now he's able to, again, just start getting more tankier, be providing more for um, top baller here. And yeah, now that we have that Worm Fallen and I have looted out, it, it's just a lot of damage that I can't wait to see for them to put out. Women's up, gonna be looking to chunk everybody, including the two tanks, but this could be a potentially dangerous spot for Team Ball and King Kraus. They don't care at the end of the day, just gonna walk right through the damage coming from Co Coyote Stark and the top laners on the bot side of the map. Everybody else looking to group here, maybe even potentially push for an in. They gotta look at that top lane, you know, for inside of Crystal Game. That's that's a weak point for them right now. It's getting pushed in, being shoved in so very hard. You need to correct that before you look for this Baron play or else. You could be in a rough spot. But speaking of vision, just real quickly, it's all in the favor of the side of Crystal Cave Gaming. An ultimate and ultimate into bullet time. And that's going to be Red Panda getting killed. He used the ultimate. He used, or sorry, used Arcane Shift. He used the flash. He used the heal. It didn't matter at the end of the day. Paris and Canada using the ultimate to keep himself alive. The charm goes wide. It doesn't matter. Top baller picks up a kill right there. Picks up a double in there. Looking for the end of the game, folks. And it's going to be Coyote Stark. Still has the spirit rush. And again, Reximus didn't use his ultimate to keep his AD carry alive. And I think that was his fatal flaw of this game. Just not holding that ultimate for his AD carry. Not holding that ultimate for people who needed it. And yeah, the end of the game is coming out here, folks. Coyote starts trying to do what he can. Trying to dip and duck and dash it all around the map. And it doesn't even matter. They're just going to ignore him. Hit the Nexus. Hit the turrets. And that's, that's game, folks. Yeah, they're going to secure him right now as... Oh, they might as well just secure the catfish as well, but two sharp barrage comes out. Like, oh, top baller. Oh. oh, that's that's mean. <laughs> that's mean. Make him go seven and two at the end of the day. So you can't say he completely gapped him, but you know, I still say that's uh I, I would still I'd still say it's heavily favored in his, <laughs> no, <laughs> into his side. You know, getting one kill it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. I mean, you, you still have to look at that as much as the safety net of playing in Israel is. Uh, he just still couldn't get online as quickly as he'd like um, and was not able to provide the damage that he was looking for. I, I mean, unfortunately, you have to look at that even though Coyote Stark had a good lead and everything. Once there was certain plays started being made, um, Temporal just kind of started throwing away a little bit and... You know, that put themselves further and further behind. And now this is why you saw that 4K gold lead you had in about 11 kills more. You were denied Dragon Soul twice at this point. And yeah, just a great game coming out of Crystal Cave Gaming. Yeah, a really great game. And, you know, uh, there, there's often the argument of, well, is this one of those situations where it's a throw by temporal image or is it just good gameplay coming out from Crystal Cave Gaming? I think it's one of those situations where it's a little bit of both, you know. Uh, there were a few, you know, plays from Temporal Image that came out that were really bad and turned really horribly against them. But then after those plays were made, they started shaping up again and they were playing super well. But by that point, so was Crystal Cave Gaming, right? So uh, it's, like I said, it's a little bit of both. But hats off to both teams coming out here on stage and giving it their all. But with that, I think it will be Crystal Cave Gaming moving on uh, into into uh, playoff contention. If I'm if I'm correct about that, good control. Uh, I didn't get that confirmation yet, but I believe it would give them a better standing. I'd have to. Unfortunately, I did not look at rules here. Uh, someone could help me with that and make sure. But. Um, I've been, quite, see. I've been quite giving it a, it a gander myself, but I do know that sadly with this loss at Temporal Image, they won't be moving on. I think they end their season one and five roughly in terms of overall series wins. So hats off to them. Thank you guys for coming out. It was a really fun casting you and I, we're waiting on Gigatron to give me confirmation, but I 
dude. I, I'm trying, dude. I am looking <laughs> as much as possible, but I, I think good job, good luck to uh, Crystal Cave Gaming in the uh, in the playoffs bracket. Uh, uh, I again, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think it's. I would assume it is top mm. four, which would be. I mean, Crystal Cave was already in top four in their group. Mm. So that means that, again, they should be going on regardless because now they are at, uh, what, six and six. So they're at okay. that, definitely that 50% there for when it comes to win loss. And as long, which means that, uh, uh, QG pawns can't take anything away from them because even if they win two games and put themselves three to three, you have to look at Crystal Game is six and six, not six and seven. So they should move on forward with that and everything there. We do have uh, Zenigma, Shogun, and Goon Squad rounding up top three right now for group two as, like I said, should be Crystal Gaming, Crystal Cave Gaming actually coming in with them as well. But Unfortunately, I am not. I'm trying to scan through everything, but it, 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 I need you know, someone else to help, to help <laughs> me with that. But, they, but they're not responding to me, but it's fine. Uh, we'll just say <laughs> that regardless, whether you made it in or not, you put a very good effort there, Crystal Cave. So I appreciate you guys coming out, taking a good 2-0. And even though you're behind a little bit, you were able to still come out with the second game here. Absolutely. but. With those closing remarks, that will be all from us within the production booth. Thank you for coming out to watch. Ladies and gents, it is has been a very fun evening. I, of course, am your play-by-play -play caster, or was your play-by-play -play caster. Now I'm just an average citizen like you folk. I was joined by the great Gatron. Thank you for being my color caster as always. And that has been Room Terror Academy freshman class signing out on this uh, Friday evening, folks. Take it easy.